Perhaps it's time for a little reminder of that old saying. Take all perceptions from the sensual, the aesthetic, and the transcendent levels of mind and bring them to the subtle level of body, speech, and mind. The body of appearances, the speech of vibrations, and the mind of awareness. From where those perceptions flow down the side of the spine, positive, negative, male, female, subjective, objective, to meet and rise up the central column of pure mind to emerge as our thoughts and our deeds. It's a little bit like our digestive process. Maybe like ingesting a pina colada. First of all, you swirl it around in your mouth and you think, oh yes, there's the Bacardi and there's the Malibu and there I can taste the pineapple, coconut tree. And then you can feel it slide down and you think, oh yes, now that feels nice as the digestive process kicks in, you start to feel the effects of it. And then you get up and trip over the carpet and go, oops. <laughs> it's a bit like the stories, really, isn't it? So there's that story about the very rich Mandarin who was the governor of a very large province in China. And he had an only and beloved daughter who was so beautiful that he kept her in a tower away from the eyes that would covet her. But in her ivory tower, spending the hours embroidering or painting. It was a lonely, lonely life. She would look out of the window at the flowing river on which the tower rested and watch in the hope that one day a prince would come and take her as his bride. But there was the experience for her of every day as she looked out of her window, she would see a fisherman in his small boat going to those places where he could catch his fish. And he always played his flute. The sound would waft up into her tower and evoke in her the emotions, sadness, wonder, awe. And she would imagine far-flung places that she had never seen or have feelings that were so deep and arose to her to bring tears to her eyes, roses to her cheeks and laughter to her lips. And she imagined that this fisherman was a strong, handsome man, perhaps, perhaps even her prince. So she would throw rose petals down as he passed to indicate that she appreciated the sounds that wafted up at her. And as for the fisherman, looking up he could not see clearly her face, but he imagined her as beautiful. 
and so his flute became haunting with the longing and love that he felt as he imagined this beautiful being. And the days passed, and the days passed. Now this young fisherman, though he was tall and strong, had been born with a visage that by all who saw him described him as ugly. And then our fisherman heard that this being in the tower was the daughter of the greatest Mandarin in the land. And so his heart sank. He could never aspire to have this beautiful being as his bride. So he ceased playing the flute as he passed by. The beautiful maiden, feeling the absence of this sound that was so evocative for her, went into a state of great sadness, despondency, depression. She grew thinner and paler and her parents were greatly, greatly concerned about her. But then the servants who tended to her told the Mandarin of the fishermen and the sound and the rose petals that his daughter threw. And so the Mandarin thought to himself, perhaps this fisherman, even though he is a lowly fisherman, could bring health and happiness to his daughter once again. And so he called the fisherman to him. But when he saw him and saw his face, he also was abhorred by this appearance. But then he thought to himself, it is the sound of his flute, his music, that has brought solace to his daughter. So perhaps she would fall in love with him. And so an arrangement was made for them to meet. But when the maiden was confronted with the fisherman, and saw his ugliness, she was completely repelled and rejected him out of hand. So he left and a great sadness descended upon him. So he too grew pale and wan. He wasted away to the point where his body dropped. The maiden herself, also in her tower, gradually forgot the fisherman, the sounds of the flute, a mere fleeting memory. But then a strange thing happened. When the ashes of the fisherman were placed in his fishing boat and the boat left moored by the river, those ashes transformed into a magnificent 
crystal. One day when the Mandarin was on the river in his river boat, he saw the fishing boat and it was told to him that this was in memory of the fisherman who had pined away for love of his daughter. And when he went to inspect this boat, there he saw the crystal that had been the ashes of this young man. So deeply moved was he that he took the crystal to his glass blowers and he had fashioned out of it a cup and thinking that this would be a solace to his daughter he took the crystal cup to her now when tea was poured into this cup, it could clearly be seen the image of the young fisherman and the faint sound of his flute would waft as the tea was stirred. The maiden was so enamoured with this cup that she took it into her chamber where on her own and alone she poured tea into the crystal cup and clearly saw the fisherman and heard clearly the sounds of his flute. Suddenly she realized that life was transient. Images were merely appearances, but the sound of the flute remained evocative in all ways. And listening to this sound, she, seated, became like stone as her soul left her body. When she was discovered, the sound of the flute was still to be heard, wafting in all directions. Now clear and strong as the souls of these two met and travelled to that place. That place that all know and long for place of unity, oneness. This
trip over our carpet. Become like God drunken lovers. Living in a state of unknowing. The music of life evoking in us the responses that arise What is your crystal cup? When the stirrings, the image, the music grows louder, clear, strident, bringing the responses. like the perceptions rising up the central column of pure mind as our thoughts and our deeds. Unlike those God-drunken lovers who wander the streets, clear and alert and present, but 